Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is 1 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois. That means it's time for another live stream. Today is April 13th. I thought yesterday was April 13th, but today is April 13th, and it's a Thursday. And normally on a Thursday, we've been doing happy hour and bringing in some guests, but I just couldn't get it. Uh, it was it felt overwhelming for me. I asked a couple of people. Scheduling didn't work out. And then after that, I was just like, I got too much other stuff going on. Mentally, it feels uh, very overwhelming already. And so we're just not going to have a guest today. Hopefully, that's going to be all right. But let me tell you what. You are listening and you are still tuned in to the number one running podcast to listen to in the background, if your name happens to be Stephen Lung. So Stephen Lung, both of you guys, welcome. I know that uh, you guys have been enjoying the show, some of you in the chat and some of you afterwards. So I appreciate that. All of you guys listening to this on the podcast and the audio only version, if you are named Stephen Lung, hopefully you're having a good run. And even if you're not, hopefully you're having a good run too. Maybe you're tapering now. It was really beautiful and a little bit hot out there today. I ran in three in shorts. That was a look. Um, so yeah, that was interesting today. And then for everyone else listening in the, on uh, watching this on YouTube later and uh, not live, welcome to you guys as well. Hopefully, um, hopefully you figured out what you're going to pack for your trip to Boston. Cause I, I don't know anymore. I did stop by on the way back from my run today at a Walgreens and I picked up a poncho. So I can have that in case it's raining or wet anywhere. I could either wear it or sit on it. One of those two is what I'm thinking. I think I might also pack a raincoat as well or a rain layer. I'm not sure. I don't know. I got a lot of packing I got to do. I just a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff still happening. But before I get too overwhelmed and work myself into a frenzy, let's see who else we got um, in the live stream. We got Sean. He says, hey, everyone. It's the first 80 degree day since September here in Massachusetts. A little bit of rain in 50 to 60 Monday seems kind of nice now. Is that what it's going to be? I'm worried about the wind uh, and I'm worried that it's going to storm and I'm worried that I'm going to be like sitting and cold. You never, you know, you know what? See, I, I just really detest rain. I like to run in the rain. I hate to be in the rain though. Like, you know, what? every time you watch like a cartoon movie or something like that and like an animal gets wet and soaked and like you see their furry puffy and then like the water makes them all flat and they're soaked and they just look like they're cold chill to the bone that's how i feel like i am in the rain and so i just i'm not looking forward to how much time there is between like getting on a bus and actually starting the race i'm really nervous about that right now so i don't know i don't know i'm gonna i'm packing all i'm bringing like four different sets of throwaway clothes depending on what the weather is going to be like i might just wear them all joey style just come in super puffy and then take off whatever i need to take off as i'm going like not during the race, hopefully in, in the village, you know, that's where I'm at. Uh, I'm freaking out. I got to tell you. <laughs> Hillary Thornton says, hey, go fam, made it on time for once. It's howdy from a rainy Atlanta. Got a short run in on the local trails before the skies opened up. All right. Well, you made it in just in time. So good to see you. And Lalo P says, yo, what's going on? JC says, good afternoon, friends. Here for a short time today watching that Boston forecast. Maybe I shouldn't. You know, I, I don't know. I think at this point, I just got to pack a little bit of everything. Um, what's complicated is this is the first trip where I've had like multiple kind of brands that I'm working with. I'm trying to think, you know, like for TRE, I try to go like brand less. And I even had Greg make me a shoe that was a feel issue, you know? Um, but I rarely have to juggle multiple brands in the same weekend and that's what's happening. And so I feel like the packing is a little bit easier in that sense, but also harder. So I just, I don't know. I think I just need to, I think it's going to be a two suitcase trip. Uh, I did change my flight though. Now I'm the first flight out of Chicago to Boston tomorrow. Flight leaves wheels up at 7:10. 7:15 maybe. Something really early. I think 7:15. No. 9:15. I don't know. It's early. I think it's 7:15. But I, I cuz I land like in the morning. And then I'm thinking I'll just drop off my suitcases at the hotel and then just head straight over to the expo. That's my plan. You know, it's, ugh, I don't know. I'm freaking out, I'm freaking out. But you know, yesterday though, was the first time I really started getting like really, really excited. I've been feeling really overwhelmed lately, but yesterday I started feeling really excited. So that's been a good change. Sega Dreamcast says, weather here has been perfect the last two days. Great running. So, you know what, Sega Dreamcast, every time I see your username pop up here on the screen, I remember, do you remember the commercial uh, marketing that they had for that? The Dreamcast, they would say, it's thinking. They would like whisper it to you, it's thinking. Because every time like the disc would read, like it was so noisy. And they turned that from being like a, like a design flaw or a feature flaw and turned it into like 
an endearing quirk. I thought that was brilliant. And I still remember that to this day. I love the Dreamcast. Remember that Virtua Tennis? So good. That's such a good game. Um, all right. Where, where do you go? I saw something from Tony up in here. Where do you go? Uh, Tony, you guys are trying to guess what show I know where. When you guys figure it out, when you guys see it, you'll be like, oh, okay. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and Sean says, Kabuzi, I had not one but two full course Boston Marathon videos in my YouTube recommendations today. I wouldn't sweat it. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot. Hey, I, I told you the one I found about those two British people. Um, I did leave a comment and they wrote back. I don't think they understood the question I was asking, but I'm fairly sure that I, this is someone that I met like spectating the world championship marathon in Eugene. And then they had also been to Boston that year, earlier in the year and ran it and made a video. And so, yeah, small world. But anyway, um, yeah. Uh, you know, what's interesting is, so like, I don't want to talk about it too much because it also freaks me out and makes me sad. But um, the guy that made, I saw, there's one that's like a 360 camera full course video. And then there's one that's like uh, on a, a DJI, the Osmo action one. And the guy that did that, uh, a Chinese runner, although I think he lives in the US, but um, he, he speaks in Chinese in the video. And uh, he has a link to his Strava post for that event, for that day. And so I looked up the name as well and then his results are still there so it's not like they didn't dq him i hope i don't get him dq but you know what's funny is i've been so i've been watching like everyone else i've been looking for boston marathon videos and i have been enjoying like the coaches that have been there like a dozen times and they're like here's where you pee and here's the one area but that's not the good area that area just has porta potties if you want to sit down and relax you go to this other area. you know like those videos i've been enjoying that and that's how they all talk, real growly. But um, there's other videos that like have been referring back to all, the, all these other people's videos, and I just think it's really funny. And um, I, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. It's giving me a lot of uh, stress, mental load to think about the whole filming situation. But yeah, uh, Scott Strule says five miles in the super blast. I am loving this shoe. It is a good shoe for running marathons in. Um, that's not a hint or anything. I'm just saying I like that shoe a lot too. Um, I'm, I'm debating whether or not to get another one. Because where, where is mine? Is it over here? Where did mine go? I don't know where mine went. Uh-oh. Oh, here it is. See, I, I got to 100 miles in this so fast. I think part of it, you know, you run a marathon, you're a quarter of the way there. So I ran CIM in these. I'm thinking about picking up some of the new colors. They're really nice. But I also am like, I, uh, I got to run more miles in other shoes. I can't be doubling up on shoes. But I do like this one a lot. Mm. All right, Frank says, I still have to go get the poncho. Yeah, I think, you know, here's the thing. Every time I've bought a poncho to wear before a race, it hasn't rained. So I feel like if nothing else, that's like a really good result too, I think. You know, because the alternative is could be like, well, it just got so hot it didn't rain. You know, I wouldn't want that either. But I, I don't know. Hmm. Davin Patterson says, hey, me and the pups are about to start a run. Here's a pups right here. Me and the pups are about to start a run, so won't be commenting, what will, but we'll be listening. Davin, I think that and we've talked about this before. That photo that you have here, it looks like you live where Ginger Runner lives, like Pacific Northwest. Am I wrong on that? I think we've talked about that. But I sent him a message today. He had some footage in the trails. I sent him a request, and he said he would do it. We'll see if he actually does it or not. I don't know. But if it happens, I'll be pretty excited. But I'm letting you guys know that could be something fun coming. Um, Sean says, you definitely take a rain jacket for the Sunday shakeout. Yeah, that's true. I think it's going to rain. It might rain hard. It rained hard for the shakeout at um, at the Cherry Blossom 10 mile. But we still had a really fun time. It might rain hard on Sunday again. Oh, can you imagine? Like uh, The entire town of Boston is going to smell like wet dog like right around lunchtime because everyone's going to go out for their run and then come back inside around like 10 or 11. And then it's just going to be ugh, sweaty, clammy runners in their rain-soaked gear. 
hundreds of them at a time. Remember, guys, though, if we see any other running groups, we're going to throw down. Okay, so that's that's the deal, especially if we see if we see believe in the run going up for their run at the same time we leave to go out for ours on Sunday. We're going to we're it's going to be it's going to be like Braveheart. Hold, hold. And then everyone goes and it's going to be a clash in the streets. You know, they don't close down Newberry Street, but we're going to close it down. <laughs> right. OK, are we in? Are you guys in for that? I think that's what we should do. <laughs> uh all right. The Manor Runs here says, hey, everyone. He got his hostel booked so he can enjoy the Boston Marathon festivities. Manor Runs, I just saw your New York Marathon video. That was pretty good, man. The 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 uh, the cheering at the end, really good. Really good. Frank says, the forecast for Monday, the wind keeps going back and forth in the forecast. I know, I know. Um, Yeah, we'll figure it out. I think there's going to be a lot of people running like, 255 ish right so that's like the group that i'm i don't know i think there's a couple a few of us that might want to run together here uh i think there'll be i think we'll have a lot of company so we could tuck in or you know what you know what i'll jump up front if i'm feeling good just get behind me we'll go you know what i mean so we'll, we'll be good I mean, even if it's uh if it's a headwind yeah this, that, that, that might burn me out though but you know i'll recover on the hills i've been hearing a lot about the hills i was listening to but I think I think part of the reason why I'm feeling so overwhelmed is because like everything that I've been listening to while running is Boston related. So I'm like, like I'm just it's on. I I think maybe I just need to listen to more music for the next couple of days. But I am leaving for Boston tomorrow, so that's not going to happen. But um, I was listening to Jonathan Levitt's podcast, interviewing Sarah Vaughn this morning, and then uh, Matt Chittum put out the Road to the Trials podcast updates for three different runners. Um. So like I've been just listening to a lot of Boston content. It's been good, but it's getting a little bit over. It's getting to me. It seems I don't know. Raj Kumar Rashinji says, "Coach K, best of luck in Boston. Thank you very much." People have I made the, my last Boston Marathon prep video today, talking about the taper and how I'm going to taper, and people have started predicting, like calling what time they think I'm going to run. Some ambitious times. Someone put two fifty seven in there. I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But um, one of the questions that I'm going to ask, and I asked this to, um, I think I asked this to Emma Bates. And I think I asked this to, I don't know if I asked this to Sarah Hall before they ran at the world championships. But one of the questions I'm going to ask to Ben True and Nico are like, um, you know, what does success look like uh, at the end of the day on Monday? You know? And I think for me to feel like I, I just like didn't, overdo it at any point you know what i mean so i don't want to bonk at all and i really want to empty it out you know and then coming down that last stretch 600 meters it's a long 600 meters but that's going to be one continuous long gopro clip because that's just going to be camera on whole time um taking it all in i've been debating whether or not to stop and rile the crowd up i guess i'm gonna just have to see how good i if i feel terrible then i'll stop but if i'm feeling good i'll just keep going but I'm 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 feeling like I'm starting to visualize a little bit more, you know, like myself on the course, which has been hard because I don't know what I'm gonna bring, filming wise, uh, you know. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. Um, all right, Graham Haynes says, "What's up, everyone? Today is an exciting day for me. I set a goal to run 1,000 miles this year, and today, I'll hit the halfway point. All right, uh, I think this is the one I want. Yeah, there we go." Good job, Graham. Keep it up, man. Keep it up. You're ahead of schedule because if you're at a thousand, you know, you need to hit. A, you needed to hit 500 by June, so we're in April. So that's good. It's really good. T.W. Randolph too says, "Hey everyone, happy to catch the live stream. Glad to have you here." Stephen Lung says, "Good luck all in Boston. Rooting for all of you." Stephen, let me tell you the story. So, I got a message from someone on Instagram. Someone DM me. And the name Stephen Long, and I thought it was you, but he says, um, "I'm never able to catch the live stream live, but I always watch afterwards." But my name is also Stephen Long, so every time I hear the, for the person Stephen Long participating in the chat, I'm always very jealous, and I have FOMO. So, so that's what that, that's what came to my DMs this morning, and so I was like, "Oh, that's amazing!" So I'm like, "The Stephen Longs love to listen to the Kofu's Run Club live stream." So. 
That's why I made that the subject of today's number one. <laughs> Um, Terrence who is here says driving by briefly heading out for a run with a friend, but best of luck to all the Boston runners. Awesome. Terrence. Thank you. Um, Frank says, I feel like staying dry at the start is going to be the biggest issue. Yeah. You know, here I go, I go back and forth on that. One of my best half marathons ever race was the Chicago half where it poured the entire day. I remember cause this was the year that the, um, it was the Peg Trail Gakuso came out. So I think it was the first year of the Pegasus Trail. Because um, I remember they were really pretty trail shoes and it was super muddy and they got destroyed that day. Not that I, those were my like after race shoes. Um, and so I raced that morning in a different shoe. But like I remember I had worn other shoe. I worn those shoes to the race. So that way I would have dry race shoes. And I changed into those dry race shoes in a porta potty. It was just, and I could just hear you hear all the pouring rain on top. And the minute I stepped out of the port, feet dry, because I had different, I think I had different socks too. So new socks, new my race shoes. The minute I stepped out into the grass, my race shoes sank into the grass and like they were, my feet were instantly soaked. So, but I had a pretty good day that day. So I feel like even wet at the start is fine, but that race happens in the summer or like October, like first week in October. So it's warm. Like if it's like low fifties, high forties and raining, I'm going to get cold. So, uh, I don't know. Mm. Alan says, how much time is needed to start seeing faster paces when doing low heart rate training? I've been doing it for a few months now and haven't really seen much progress. Um, a few months is probably about enough time to start seeing it. Um, yeah. So like, if it's still not working for you, I would make sure one that your heart rate is are accurate. That's the most difficult thing, especially Alan, based on the photo that you have here, it looks like your skin tone is similar to mine. I don't know if skin tone is it, but wrist based heart rate monitors always give me a hard time. So that's why I always switch out the bands for a Velcro one. Um, or I used a chest strap when I was starting out low heart rate training. So that would be number one thing to check. And then number two is you know, if it's still not working out for you, I think the question is to make sure, like, is this, is what you're defining as a heart rate, the right, you know, level. Um, so you can check that as well. And then, um, you know, for some people, low heart rate training just doesn't work, doesn't take that well. So it might be time to, I mean, I think if you've given it an honest try for, for a few months, that could be it. But one of the things that I think slowed me down in it was I still kept trying to run a lot. I feel like you have to ease up on the intensity too, because it's kind of like you're training a different system almost. Well, you are, but like you're focusing on it. And so that might be ease up a little bit on your mileage and let your body kind of like really adjust. I don't know. You have to let me know what you decide to do, Alan. Frank says, are you increasing distance? It only works if you're building mileage. So he went the opposite way. So I don't know. I kept mine pretty high, relatively high. And it just took so much longer though. And that was frustrating. So I don't know. Uh, Mark says, have you seen Ben's Jim Johnson's like seeing like the Greg design? I haven't seen the, I only saw the teaser. I haven't seen the full one yet. If it's what I think it is, it's a pretty brilliant idea. Uh, Dana Dane says, if you typically run 30 miles a week, how do you taper for a 10 K next week for my 10 K race in Richmond on the 22nd? Um, you know, I don't really race 10 cases, so I'm not as familiar with what a taper is supposed to really feel like. Um, but when I've raced 10 Ks, I don't really taper all that much. Like the week of, um, I might skip the midweek workout and maybe do something really, really short. Um, or something with just some strides in it. And then, you know, easy, short, easy running like the day or even two days before the race. But it won't really take that much. So I would say like maybe the day before, do like a 20 to 30 minute run. You know, maybe do some strides and some drills. Like that's about it. Not too much the day before. But I don't, I I don't think you need like a two week taper. Hmm. All right, Shannon says, just wear a ton of clothes and bring a spare pair of socks and your racers. 
Co, you do great work. Can you take your time getting content out so you can try to relax while there? Yeah, I'm not going to really film too much stuff. The only thing I'm doing over the weekend, well, I'll do, um, once I get my bib, I'm going to do the flat lay. That's a reel, though. That doesn't take that long. It takes me like 20 or 30 minutes of filming and then maybe 45 minutes to edit and put out. And then I probably put together a story or two from each of the events that I do. Um, and then, so that's three events. So that'll be a little bit, that won't be too much though. And then, um, yeah, so it won't be too much. And then I really won't start editing on any of the content together. I'm, you know what though? I might do one cause I'm going to get in on Friday a little bit earlier now. And then I'm gonna have some time to do some site, like not sightseeing, but like running around town and collecting video footage. So I might do something like that. I kind of did for like DC and the cherry blossom. I might do a Boston one and I'll of course do it to like, you know, what is that? There's always, there's like those like two or three, like kind of like bagpipe Irish rock songs that everyone uses. Probably some, you know, like make it sound like a Sam Adams commercial. I'll probably do something trite like that. So I'll do some fun stuff that keeps me ent entertained, but I won't do too much work. And then the video won't come out. And, you know, I'd like to say it would come out Tuesday, but it probably won't come out till Wednesday or Thursday. And I also feel like given some of the things that I'm concerned about, taking a little bit of extra time would be in my benefit, maybe. Uh, all right, let me scroll down because I'm really, really far behind you guys. Uh, Andy's here. He says, I know I, I dropped it on your last video, but I just want to drop in and wish you the best of luck for Boston. Hope you smash it. Thanks, Andy. You know what? I really wish you were coming to run this one, you know? Cause like Ed Bud's coming. I know Ed Bud's not running it, but you know, um, I was just thinking that when I saw your comment and I was like, man, well, he should be here. He should just come over and watch the race. Um, cause you know what? Did you guys see, I, I just watched it this, mo maybe this morning or last night. I just watched Andy's, uh, race vlog video. He went and just spectated a 5k. Um, I think that was a really entertaining video. I really liked it. And I was just like, look at this community that's develop developing over there. You've got Ben is running. You got Welsh runner. Um, his wife is there. And then um, FOD runners there and Philly's there. I'm like, you know, that's like the UK crew. You know, we're only missing like a handful of other people. But like, you know, there's a nice like cohort of people that are there making videos, really great content that I enjoy. And it's awesome to see you guys all like like British Avengers style. <laughs> What 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 movie was that that I was watching? There was like, I don't know. I'm trying to think of what it was. Oh no, it was in uh, Kingsman. Remember Kingsman? There was like the British Kingsman, and then there was like a U.S. version. They were in like Texas or something like that. It was. I feel like we should have like a, you know, a face off like that. <laughs> uh, Andy says that 2025 is the goal for him. Okay, 2025. All right. Well, I'm hoping for 2024 for London. That's my goal. Try to get there. Uh, and you better says shipping off to Boston, Dropkick Murphys. Uh, it'll turn into a Boston crime. <laughs> Maybe I'll just play the, the theme music from The Departed. You guys know I like the cinematic stuff. So it's like, you know, I'll do that. Hmm. Jay Preston says, is there any reason why Boston Marathon is on a weekday and not a weekend? It's because it's always on Patriots Day. Patriots Day is the third Monday, I believe, third Monday in April every year. And that's a statewide holiday. And so they always run it on that. They've always run it on that Monday. Mr. E says, what's the time and pace the Rangers are shooting for? I don't know what time I'm going to end up with, but the rough goal that we've been talking about for a little bit uh, and I think the weather could maybe change it, but like assuming reasonably decent runnable conditions, you know, I like to run with some, find some other people that are looking to run about 255 through 16 miles and then, you know, let the hills do what they do and we'll see what happens at that point. I'm expecting to lose a good three to four minutes in the hills and then resuming back up to like marathon pace for the rest of it. So, you know. Hoping under a, a sub three, I think would be a really great day for me. Um, but like ultimately like getting a BQ, I think would also be pretty, pretty impressive. So um, yeah, my first Boston, probably my only Boston. Um, 
I mean, I'm sure I will. I, I hope to visit and watch the race from now on, you know, unless I had family stuff like I did last year. Um, but, you know, you know, this is my chance. I got a bid this year, and so we'll see what we could do. Mm. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Take a drink. It was Kingsman and the Statesman. That's that's what we got to do. We got to make a video like that at some point. I'll bring a bunch of people. I'll be we'll bring Tommy. You got to bring Drew because I feel like if it's a fight or something like that, you got to have Drew Whitcomb on your team. He's got reach. He's got the long arms, you know. So. <laughs> I think that's what it is. Everybody says, I'll see you in, in 2024 for London for sure. All right. Well, I mean, I've been telling you, I, I don't know if you've been around any, because I, I know you stop in frequently when you can, but I've been telling people that I'd like to try and figure out some sort of UK tour leading up to a race. There's been some suggestion to do it, like the the London 10K, um, kind of like running around London and then ending on that race. Um, or maybe it does, we do it as a lead up into London itself, or I don't know. I don't know. I'd like to plan something. And of course, I mean, like, I'd have to coordinate with all of you guys over there. I feel like when can I meet up with you guys and see you guys? That I mean, it's it wouldn't be a UK tour without that, you know? Yeah, Plano Benz is Ben Park. I mean, like, you got to get Ben Parks involved. You got to get Forty involved. There's a lot of. I mean, there's just so many. There's so many runners in the UK, and just watching that race that Andy filmed. I'm like, this is a different place. This is a different culture than what we have in the U.S. You know what I mean? There are not 5Ks like that in the U.S., I don't think. So I'm like, I was, I'm like there should be. That'd be a lot of fun, you know? Um, like some, it, it needs to be like something in between, like, you know, your local week de- weekend 5K, or like an Itasca Oktoberfest. Something in between, which was a fun race. Well, well organized, and I ran a fast time. It was a good course. Something in between that and like a pop-up race, like that's like a take the bridge. There's, I mean, I feel like that's where the UK 5K scene is. You know, other than park run is a different thing, I think it seems from what I've seen. But like, I feel like I want to see one of those races too. Like just all these club runners going after it. That'd be pretty fun. Mm. <laughs> okay, so Shannon says, Co, you should set a goal time though for real because you'll feel tired after Newton. So definitely don't just plan through 16. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I've, I mean, I'll, I, I have, I know, I, I mean, I want to push to the level of fitness. And that's kind of like where the time doesn't matter all that much, you know? And so, like, my main goal is whenever I like, get, get really tired at the end of a race, um, I kind of, I actually, CJ Albertson, he actually mentioned something that like made a lot of sense. He's like, sometimes you just kind of fall asleep and you don't realize what's going on around you. And the next thing you know, the pack is gone and you're not with it anymore. And your race is over. You might still be able to pull out a good day, but your racing is over. And that's kind of something that happens to me. And it happens to me in a lot of workouts too. And something that I try to focus on in workouts is like, there's a time where you think that you're pushing and you've got your foot heavy on the gas. And if you're not mentally careful, your body will automatically start to ease off on the gas. And next thing you know, oh, I'm running like 30 seconds too slow. Maybe not 30, but like, you know, you're running much slower than you should be. And so like, I feel like as long as I can keep my foot on the gas, you know, to the right level the entire time, I think it's going to be a good day. And I'm excited to see what time that ends up being. Um, But also keeping in mind that, you know, like I don't, you know, there's, I'm not going to be, there's no pressure here for me to have a good time you know, or not to have a good, I, there's, I want to have fun, but like to have like a fast time. Um, so I just want to be able to feel like I've executed well, you know, Mike Leonard says that I, I bet you won't lose more than a minute 30 in the hills total. Oh, I don't know. You, I mean, I'm just such a bad uphill runner. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Sean says, I don't remember. Does Boston have anything to eat or drink after you cross the finish? I Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to go watch some of those other videos um, where people t- like go through like the entire thing. I mean, I feel like if there isn't like Sam Adams waiting for me at the end, I'm going to feel pretty disappointed. You know? I mean, yeah, why wouldn't there be, right? I feel like it'd probably be Mick Ultra or something. Goose Island would work. I'd go for Goose Island afterwards, but that's not really like a Boston thing. Um, yeah, I mean, 
I could go. I'm, I feel like, you know, I know it's not the right town, different cities, but like I could go for a Yingling. I feel like, I don't know. I don't usually focus too much on like whether or not I'm drinking a lot before, like as I'm like preparing for a race. But like, like the first week or two after Tokyo, I was very much in kind of like, um, you know, I'll have a beer with dinner kind of thing. And then the last, like this last week, I've been like, well, I really want to have a beer today. Oh, I should probably not. And it's been fine. But like every night I have that conversation was a little bit different than normal. So I'm like, I don't know, I'm inching for a beer, I guess. But I just think overall, I'm very tired. Um, I've been doing a lot of training. I ran a lot of marathons this last year. And so I think my that's one way my, like my mind is telling me like, yeah, you know, it'll be nice to have some time off. So let's like really blow it out on at Boston on the course, on the course. I mean, not afterwards on the course. Um, let's leave it all out there and then we can really enjoy the summer in a different way. So, you know, yeah, I don't know if there is to eat or drink afterwards. Hopefully I'll be in a mood to eat and drink. That's like the main thing I want. Um, Morgan Bean says, if there was a, a fight amongst runners, I think I feel like Stephen Scullion could knock people out. You know what he would do? He would knock you out and then he would smile like like he does <laughs> in every video. I love that smile of his. It's so fun. Um, but yeah, he would he would be nice about it. But he I, I mean, I feel like yeah, I don't know, like uh, maybe it's like a stare the stereotype. But I feel like just the accent, the shaved head, I just feel like I would not want to be on his uh, angry side. <laughs> you know? Uh, go running with Otter says, how many marathons did it take you to BQ? Um, I had the idea that I might be able to BQ. I think I just did, uh, was it two? I think it might've been, it might've taken me two marathons to BQ. Mm, yeah. But it, like the whole process was over. It was a couple of years. I think I feel like it was only like two attempts. Um, and where's this? Josiah K says, I just started running in January. I hope to qualify for Boston in five to 10 years. Is that feasible? I mean, I think it can be if you're, but it all kind of depends. Um, I think it depends on where you're starting out from, um, and like how consistent you can be. I think that if you want to accelerate that, just be consistent, run throughout the year. I'm not saying you're training the same level of intensity 52 weeks out of the year, but I mean like, no, really, no, like you know, I used to take like the entire winter and sometimes most of the spring off. And then I would wonder why I would never get any better, you know? And so like just running you around that, you know, is like for me, the key, key to it all. So it just depends. Um, uh, Colin McSee says I'm red wave cross six. Hope to see you on Sunday shakeout and at the race. Oh, hopefully I'll see you at the shakeout Colin. I don't know. What are the colors? I didn't know that there were, I thought there were numbers. I think I'm, what's the first one? I'm in that one. White wave one, corral six. That's where I'm at. Mm. Stephanie says, there's plenty of Sam Adams at Fenway Park after the race last year. Is that the post-race thing? I didn't sign up for the post-race thing. Um, yeah. You know what I think I'm going to do, though? I'm planning on going to go to the... Um, I was going to go Tuesday, but I think that... I think I... Let's, I think it's on the way back to my hotel on new is Newberry street. All the shops on Newberry street. Is that on the way back to you guys don't know where my hotel is, but anyway, um, I'm trying to think where that is in relation to the finish line is the finish line east of there or west of there. Cause bandit is going to have a portrait, like a photographer, take your picture with your medal and stuff. And so I feel like whatever, level of disarray that i'm in after the race i want that to be memorialized like in a very formal way you know what i mean like if it's just like if it's just been pouring all day and i'm just a mess i want that i want that like image in like you know like a set like one two three cheese kind of i know the portrait photographer is going to be better than that it's not gonna look like a high school photo but um you know i want to do that so i think i'm going to go to that i don't know that there's snacks and stuff at that place afterwards but maybe there will be so i think i'm going to be there for a little while and then i'll go home and take a shower and then i don't know what i'm going to do afterwards what is everybody doing after the race sean says newbury is parallel to boys and so then i'd have to like like loop back a little bit to get to newbury right okay hmm. all right Mm 
Mr. E's said, I want an energy drink after a big run. Yeah. I, I mean, usually I want a bottle of water and I want to chug it. Um, and then I may or may not want like, what, what did they have after New York? Uh, it wasn't with the race. There was like a group just handing stuff out afterwards. So I took candy from strangers and it was like a chocolate shake. I, I feel like I really enjoyed that. Like, um, who was it that talked about it? It was like El Perry or St. Pierre who talked about like having chocolate milk after long runs. And then a lot of people started talking about it. And I was like, I actually kind of like chocolate milk after a long run. It sounds gross, but I kind of actually kind of like it. <laughs> Cosmic Mind Michael Michaels is anything but Mallard at the finish line. I would go for a Mallard. Uh, but you know, I probably just, you know, it's Boston, right? So like, what do we, what, what, what will be the shot to have in Boston? If you're gonna have a shot after Boston, what would you, was it just Jameson? I'm a big Jameson fan. I could do that. My my watch just gave me a relaxed reminder. Your stress level is unusually high. Talking, talking about beer and celebrating after the the race set off a relaxed reminder on my watch. Um, Kate Brennan has, says, uh, "What's the difference between a workhorse shoe and a daily shoe?" Uh, yeah, those are kind of like very um, very loose terms of art, I guess you could say. Uh, but like. A workhorse shoe is a daily shoe, but a workhorse shoe, kind of like this one. There we go. So let's say like this is the Velocity Nitro. Which one is this? One or two? Nitro two. Um, and I feel like you're getting a really nice daily trainer shoe in it, but there's just a little bit more rubber and it feels like a little bit more kind of like built up. So a little bit more on the durability side. So you could beat it up a little bit more, maybe get a little bit more mileage out of it. It's still a good shoe, but like, definitely feels like it's built for durability a little bit more than performance where I feel like most daily shoes now are kind of like a lot of them anyway, are not quite as worried about making like the, I run a thousand kilometers in my shoes before I get rid of them. People happy, um, which I don't want to run a thousand kilometers in a shoe. I'd rather have a much more enjoyable experience for 300 miles, whatever that translates to. 500 kilometers you know um so that's kind of my preference but a workhorse shoe is a little bit more geared toward it might be a little bit heavier and might be and it's going to have less of a foam feeling and a little bit more of a rubber outsole feeling that's kind of how i define it um dad runner al says you know i hate it when we're talking about the falling asleep i hate it when i'm in the middle of a fast run and space out and realize i've slowed down for no reason that's what i'm talking about that's what cj albertson's talking about did, did you guys listen to the CJ Albertson interview? I don't know if he's okay. I think he's I think he's sad maybe. I don't know. He's an interesting guy. I wish him well, you know. Um Mark Peterson says I like chocolate milk all the time because I am a child. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, that's so funny. Uh, all right. Let's see where where did it go. Uh, and another one that I was looking for. Daniel Burton likes a smoothie after his run. And Dana Dane says, "Always love your runners' weekend vlogs. When you travel, my favorite content you produce. Really looking forward to this Boston weekend vid. Go Kofuzi. Well, thank you so much. Thank you very much. I'm I'm looking forward to making it. It'll be interesting to see what actually happens in it." But it's going to be a fun weekend. There's a lot of stuff. And Tails de Mileto says, a couple of friends are running Boston. I'll be watching on ESPN. Good luck from Mexico. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Awesome. All right. Juggle Mank says, hey, Co, finished my first marathon in Carmel, ran with a 355 group until the last two miles, and then ran 810s to finish in 351. Awesome. Really good job. What pace should I reach for in New York City this fall? Thanks. Uh, I mean, I mean, what I think that that you're gonna have to drive that a lot. You know, I don't think that there's necessarily a set progression. You know, because some people might go from running a 351 for a first marathon because it's your first too. So like, you might have a giant jump from my first marathon to my second marathon, which granted was six years apart, and I took a long break from or seven years apart. And I took a very long break from running. It was like a 440 something to like a 340 something, right? But then from in one year after that, I went from 340 to like 317. 
So you can take big chunks out of that. It just depends on how like um, consistent you are and what kind of progress you can make. And the trick is going to be finding the kinds of training programs that your body responds to. You don't, it's not the same things don't all apply to everyone. You know, I've finally figured out like the kinds of workouts that I think really work for me. Um, and it's not what typically works for, I'd say the most majority of people say people that read runner's world kind of thing. So, um, it's going to depend a lot on you. And I would say, don't worry about setting the times yet. Work on finding like, what's the workout plan you want to do and try to find one or a coach that can give you workouts in terms of effort levels and then is willing to adjust them for you as you go. So that way you're training. I think for me, I think I like training your threshold level and your marathon effort levels. Um, and if you work on those two and put in a lot of easy miles all in between those, then those numbers will keep going faster and faster, but those effort levels always stay the same. And pushing at those effort levels, I think really works for marathon racing. So I think it's, it's hard to give you a number, but I think that uh, it bodes well, especially since you finished so strong. Uh, Gordon Wilder says, where can we listen to CJ's interview? Anywhere great podcasts are sold. Uh, or wherever you listen to them. Uh, it's on Matt Chittam's Road to the Trials podcast. So that's where it is. Um, yeah, so you'll be able to find it there. And Small says, his energy did seem low on the podcast. The one, did you listen to, Miguel, did you listen to the one before that? Because he was like, I, I wasn't sure he was okay. He was like, ah, I'm not that motivated. I don't really know. I'm, I'm, he's like, I think I'll get motivated later. And I'm like, oof, he's having a hard time out there. But. Yeah, it was low, it was low energy, but I don't know if that's his normal affect. You know what I mean? I don't know him, you know, by any means. Um, so like I, I like I've heard an occasional interview here and there of him. So I don't know if this is just how he always is, you know. So. Oh, Goring Alar says he's gonna open the box. Yeah, we gotta open this box. Yeah, Kevin wants to know too. Did we unbox the feed stuff? All right. Yeah. All right, here we go. You guys want the? It's really heavy. I forget what's in here. I know there should be some Martin gels. Uh, but other than that, I don't. I don't know what else is in here that would make it so heavy. Maybe did I buy some more chocolate shake? I don't know. It's been sitting in the house for a long time, and I just never, never got to it. Because then we had all these other packages come in, and this is just stuff I buy myself. Um, so it's not like stuff that I want to review or, or show you guys necessarily. I mean, I want to show it to you guys. I'm showing it to you guys now, but I mean, you know what I mean? Oh, this is why it's so heavy. All right. All right. So first here are the Martin gels. I just, the way they do things at the feed just very much feels like a, an operation under someone's garage. So I ordered the, the dozen Martin gels and you can mix them up so they do like six and six, half calf and half regular. And they just throw a bunch in a bag. You know, but they're there. So that'll be useful. I need to bring those to Boston. Oh, ooh, I bought a lot of stuff. So with summertime coming, you know, you're sweating a lot. I bought a bunch of noon. And I bought this one, the fruit punch, because it's not caffeinated, I think. Yeah, because I'm like, I got to just drink these all day. And I can't keep drinking like caffeinated stuff in the afternoon anymore. It just messes me up too much at night. So I bought a bunch of noon. Uh, there's no Whole Foods in this area. So that's where I used to just pick it up every once in a while. Um, you know, I think they might sell it at this. There's another fancy grocery store that kind of reminds me of like how Whole Foods was like a decade ago. They have it sometimes there, but never the flavors that I want. It's always like the weird ones. So um all right adam says that the way that they do it at the feed saves on packaging and waste is that what you're saying yeah or maybe it's the noon it saves on packaging either way yeah i mean i don't i, I have no i don't need like the, the special white box for the martin gels you know i just love that they just throw it in the bag and give it to you and then i i've been really enjoying this stuff none of this stuff sponsored this is just stuff that i buy uh, the price per like serving is pretty good and this stuff mixes relatively well and there's 30 grams of carbs and 20 grams of protein. So it's like, you know, it's basically drinking chocolate milk, you know, 
I think there's a little bit more protein in this than chocolate milk. But, um, you know, chocolate milk, you got to have a lot of milk on hand. And, like, you know, we got, I got two kids that go through it a lot. And I just don't like to buy gallons and gallons of milk. Because the moment I buy, like, multiple gallons of milk, that's when everyone will not feel like drinking milk for a while. And then we just got all this milk that goes back. And then the last thing in the box that's really heavy is that I bought, I buy the Sidens of Sport by the, by the case. And this is the um, citrus one and i this is what i use pretty much every day because the price per unit's really nice and especially for winter running where i don't really like to carry fluids in the winter um usually just carrying these along is nice enough if it's not going to be enough then i'll usually find a way to run laps and stick like a water bottle in my car i've been fortunate that i didn't need to run with a hydration pack at all this winter so that feels nice because then it's easier to go fast so but that's it that's a lot of this stuff in here I go. Th I end up going through it really fast. Um, and then Obi Run says Walmart used to sell noons. Did they really? Too bad they don't still sell it because there's a Walmart near me. We go there regularly. Mm. David Frazier says, "Can you share when and where your shake will be this weekend?" There's links in the description. The first one's going to be on Saturday afternoon. That's going to be at Fiedler Field and the Esplanade by the river a little bit before 2 p.m and then um there'll be a live taping of this show the kofuzi run club at the a6 house is it i can't i can't remember some people call there's a pop-up some call it a shop some more house brand house i don't know the a6 pop-up the a6 house 6 p.m we'll do a live taping of this show for half an hour and then we'll open it up to more people because uh, i think the tickets are sold out for that not sold out but there aren't any more tickets um because it's free to go but uh then we'll all hang out afterwards so feel free to stop by even if you don't have a ticket and then 9 a.m on sunday that's going to be the rabbit shakeout at the rabbit house so all those the first one is by the river the puma one and the other two are on newberry street just walk around you'll find us i think i think they're all within like a couple blocks of each other Sega Dreamcast wants to know, do you caffeinate before our runs? I just watched the Welsh runner do 200 milligrams before a training session. That just scares the heck out of me. You know, uh, I do um, just because I'm always caffeinated. I, usually these days, I, my last coffee, my last caffeine is usually um, during the live stream. I've been trying to like cut it off after then. Every once in a while, I'll kind of forget and have a soda or something like that. Um and that has some caffeine in it, but I try not to have too much caffeine in the afternoon. But before a run, I don't intentionally caffeinate before a run, um, unless it's just my coffee in the morning. Usually these days I have to drive to get to where I'm going to run. And so I'll just bring the cup of coffee in the car and drink it on the way over there. And then I also have some on the way back. Um, but like, otherwise I'll, you know, these, I use these, ca these science and sport gels. They have 75 milligrams of caffeine per so sometimes, usually most days, I only need to bring one with me. Sometimes I bring two. Rarely I'll bring three. Um, and so that ends up being, what, 225, but usually about 75 milligrams. So I'm a pretty caffeine desens desensitized person. So I mean, caffeine doesn't bother me, really. Although, you know, here's what I'm thinking. For this race, given how unsettled my stomach was after Tokyo... I'm thinking about only bringing two caffeinated and four regular Martin gels. Last time I did three and three. I think that that third one might have been not great for me. Although my stomach was fine during the race. So is that just a side effect I may have, I should deal with? I don't know. Mm. Razor Spark says, ready for Boston Co? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Um, curious to what the weather's going to be. I still have to pack, so I'm not like re literally ready to go, but mentally I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm ready to go. I got a lot of work I got to do before I get there. So today's going to be a busy day. And I got to go to another track. I, I don't got to, but uh, I have the pleasure of being able to watch my daughter run another track meet today. So hopefully I'll be able to get there. I don't know if the same order of events today than last time. I'd like to be able to be there for her to run the mile because I feel like she really needs help pacing. And so if I can, I know the coach will like run around, but you know, there's a lot of different athletes. And so he's not always getting her splits. And I'm like, she doesn't really know what her splits are even. So like, if I could be like, 
All right. Here's where about where I think you can, I think she can run like a seven and a half minute mile. And so, um, cause she ran a three, like 20 something, like a three thirty eight hundred. 800, but she had already raced a mile early in the day. But anyway, so I think she ran like a little bit faster to seven thirty. So I feel like, you know, I need to be able to tell her when to, when to go slower and when to go faster, but that's going to take up a lot of time today. It's a closer meet though. So that's, that'll be nice. So that's going to just eat like a quarter of my day. So I got a lot of stuff I got to do, but I'll be there starting tomorrow. Hopefully I'll see you guys. Like if you, and, I, and if I see you guys at the expo, let's get a selfie, man. Don't be shy. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to be too busy. I promise you that. Especially if you see me walking around the city, if I'm just walking around the city and by myself, I'm just taking videos, you know, just, I'm just videotaping buildings and people. So like, I'm not doing anything important. You know, Stevie 76 says, Kabuzi super fan. Can we hang out the whole day? Yeah. Just follow me around. That's fine. Adam says, why carry all your calories in the start versus using the aid stations? I'm worried that I'm going to miss it. So um, I also don't want to have to dodge over if I don't have to. Like if I could carry all my hydration too, I would do it you know so like um back when i used to run with a hydration pack for all of my workouts i really thought about running like the chicago marathon with like a camelback on i really like the camelback zipper it's pretty light i feel like i could run marathon pace in it really well and i could carry enough fluid and i also feel like getting like a couple of sips from the hydration pack more frequently is better than trying to gulp a cup of water or a cup of gatorade every once in a while but I do believe that hydration packs are technically not allowed on the Chicago Marathon course. Not that I follow all the rules, but like that's one thing, you know. So like, and I don't want to carry a handheld because I'm already holding a GoPro usually. So there's just too much stuff in my hands. But I, I would prefer if I don't have to cut over to get something um, or try to catch something from someone's hand, you know. Like I would, I would prefer to avoid that. So that's why I want to cap, keep all the gels on me. Um, Depending on how I'm feeling, let's say I've like totally blown up and I'm walking up those Newton hills. Next aid station, I'm just going to go grab a whole bunch of gels and just jam them in my half tights. <laughs> so, I mean, that'll be the, that, that'll be like, that, that's how you know if I had a good day. Do I have gels or not? If I used them all, that means I had a good day. If I've got, if I'm coming home heavy, then it was not a good day. <laughs> Uh, Sean wants to know, Kavuzi, are you taking gels at miles four, eight, 12, et cetera? Or do you wait a little later to start taking it? My stomach doesn't feel ready until five to seven miles. Yeah, I, I do every four miles. Um, the first one, I never feel like I need it, but I just feel like that's how the first one is. You know what I mean? If you're like hungry, then you're kind of late. You're behind the, behind it a little bit behind schedule. So like, um, the idea for me is, um, I know some people are like, eat as much sugar as you can. And that's not terrible advice, but like, for me, it's like, you know, I never want to feel thirsty and I never want to feel hungry during the race, you know? So like you kind of have to be proactive about it. That's how I feel about it. So, um, so yeah, sometimes I forget though. Usually like the mile 12 and 16 ones are off because like I forgot for like three quarters of a mile and that's okay. It's not going to be fatal. You know, but like, so if like, if your stomach is like, oh, I can't even think about taking it and it's mile four, you got to at least take it by mile five, I think, you know, get your first one in. Cause that's, that's a lot of running. That's a lot of activity. You know what I mean? And so like, it is going to take a little bit for that sugar to get into your bloodstream. And so like, you want to make sure that you're not like, um, you know, dipping into the well too soon. That's how I think about it. Um, Manual Chan said, which science and sport gel flavor do you like best? And this, uh, which is this one? Citrus. I swear there was another flavor that I like. I thought it was called, tro was it tropical? I don't know. But it's, I know it's one that has the 75 milligrams of caffeine. And I think this is the one that I always buy. So it, I think it's called citrus. It's kind of just tastes like Sprite to me.
Gordon Lover says, Kofuzi likes selfies in the crowd seconds before the race. Here's the thing. So Thomas said that on the on on his race recap from Cherry Blossom. I I like selfies in in the corrals. I don't mind. I don't know what he was talking. I think I was cold, and maybe that's why that's what Thomas was uh, thinking about. But like I I was not mad. I don't ever get mad at someone wanting to talk to me before a race. But maybe I am that way. I don't think so. Maybe that's how it comes across. So now I'm like self conscious about that. Um, but if you want to get a selfie before the race, it's totally cool. I'm I'm I have no I like anytime anytime. I'm ready. I'm ready. I love, I love to get a selfie. So like, don't ever feel like anyone can't ask me for a photo at any time. I'm totally cool with that. Um, and I'm pretty chatty. I do. I do a live stream five days a week. I'm a chatty dude. Um, which I think I'm going to ask Ben true if he's chatty on the long run, but I also, I'm a little bit scared of Ben cause he's a very serious guy and usually serious runners don't like me that much so i just don't want him to be like who is this jag off you know what i mean so i want to ask him if he's chatting on the moment because i also get the sense that like he's a pretty quiet guy maybe a little bit introverted but i feel like once he gets to know you like then he's like a little chatterbox too like me that's kind of how i am so i don't know so i'm all i'm all for the i'm all for selfies in the crowds let me dispel that myth right here i i have no problem <laughs> with it at all i don't know why I don't know why Thomas said that about me. <laughs> I actually thought it was really funny when I was like, I was doing a deep squat to stretch out my hips. Um, and someone came down there and I thought it was just funny that like, instead of waiting me for, for me to stand up, he came down and did a deep squat with me and we took a selfie like at ground level, which is pretty funny. Hmm. Lala P says, has the feed got back to you for giving Kofuzi a little discount code? You know, I've never reached out, so I should probably reach out to someone at the feed. Uh, does no one, no, I don't think no Wadrati still works there anymore. I think, wait, let me, I don't know. I don't know. I could probably just reach out to the feed. I don't have to, because I was like, does Sydney Good Bidet still work there? I thought he did for a little while. I don't know. But anyway, I think I just, I'll, I'll reach out to them and see if we can get a little discount code. Because I, I mean, I, I've, it's just been easy. They have pretty much everything that I want is there. So it's just been easy um, to order from there. So. Mm. All right. Uh, Kevin Daliva Palesny says, I'm sorry I said that wrong. So any half tight recommendations for summer races? Yeah. I mean, I love the rabbit. Uh, half tights speedsters, right? Is that what they're called? I don't know why I don't remember their name, but the rabbit half tights are really good. I also really like the bandit ones are good. Uh, there's a new one. It's called next gen or something like that. It's got two side pockets and a back pocket. The back pocket's a little on the small side, but I, I like three pockets, two sides and one back. And then the groundwork. Well, I think they're called trail tights now from John G J A N J I. Those are also really good. So those are the three that I would recommend. New Balance has a pretty good one that I've been running. It's very thin, so it's a it's a lot cooler, but the pockets aren't as great. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, you know what I don't like? I don't like the craft half tights. Not enough pockets. So those are just some options. Um, all right. Let's see. Um, Oh, uh, Trunk Fam says, why is there only one shoe on behind your left corner next to the New Balance More version 4? Oh, up here? That's uh, So that's the 1080 version 12. I'm filming it. So uh, I'm doing the Cloud Surfer review, and that's going to be one of the shoes that I think is similar to it. So that's why it's there. So I pulled it off the shelf so I could film it, and I forgot to put it back up there. Let me see what else. Yeah, so I've got, I got a bunch of – that's one of the things I got to do because I want that video to come out maybe tomorrow or maybe Saturday morning I'll have the cloud surfer video come out Saturday doesn't make much sense so if I can get it out tomorrow that'd be nice um but likely not um unless I could finish editing it like on the airplane tomorrow um but I've got the spoken part all done the b-roll almost all done and the running part all done I just need to shoot the part with the other shoes so that's why that shoe is missing 
because it's over there because I'm going to film it in a minute. All right. Uh, I think that's going to be a good place to leave it for today. Um, thanks everyone for stopping by. Remember there's going to be a bunch of ways that we can hang out this weekend. So hopefully I'll see you there, whether you're racing or not. Um, the links to that are in the description down below. Um, and then maybe there'll be a video tomorrow, but the next live stream, it's going to be Saturday. So hopefully I'll see some of you at the live taping. And if you guys want to get rowdy, you know, during it, that's totally, I think that's going to be acceptable. I think that's going to be encouraged. So let's do that. We'll see the, the live stream live on Saturday. And if you can't be in Boston for it, hopefully you guys can be in the chat 6 p.m. Eastern time. I don't know what time that's going to be in other time zones, but that's what it's going to be. So hopefully I'll see you one way or the other. I'll have my laptop open to see you guys in the chat and then I'll see you guys in person too. It's going to be weird. I've never done it before. It should be fun. Hopefully there'll be no hiccups, but I'm sure there'll be at least a couple. So it'll be an adventure. So until I see you guys next time, be safe out there, everybody.